How does something like this happen, though? You would think with it being a government agency, there would be the utmost checks and balances, the utmost level of security. And that's exactly the point. Things have gone from bad to worse for Justin Trudeau's government as it was just revealed that a massive hack into CRA systems resulted in more than $6 million being sent as tax refunds to fraudulent accounts. Let's take a look. An investigation by the Fifth Estate in Radio Canada has found serious issues with the Canada Revenue Agency's handling of taxpayers' money and their private information. This follows a series of cyber attacks against the CRA at the height of the COVID pandemic. That's when hackers scammed various emergency benefits by making false claims using at least 12,000 Canadians' tax accounts. The CRA has to tell taxpayers, look, we have a problem, this is happening, so we will make sure that it does not happen in the future. At the time, the government said those uh, brought the, they'd brought those hacks under control. The Fifth Estate found that only 100 privacy breaches were reported to Parliament between 2020 and 2023, while there were tens of thousands of breaches. And Canadians have been kept mostly in the dark. That's shocking. It's shocking. It's frustrating. Um... Because this is taxpayer money. Like, these are tax returns. So they're overpayments and taxes that instead of going to the people they belong to, they're going to hackers. Well, and here's the thing. So it, it's, it's interesting because in, in the IT world, we look at things called data breaches. Now, this was a hack. Was it a data breach? It's hard to say, um, but they obviously were able to gain access to thousands of taxpayer accounts. So I would say that it is under the classification of a data breach because if they were able to actually access the taxpayer accounts, they have access to a lot of personal information within those CRA accounts. So that's number one. Number two is when an organization actually has a data breach, you know, whether it's Equifax, whether it's Life Labs, or any of these other organizations that have recently had data breaches, you have up to two years, 24 months to actually disclose that to the public. Now, the fact that this was between 2020 and 2023, that the CRA only disclosed to 100 people, 100 people, that there is a data breach, that's a serious, serious problem because they're actually not complying with the duty to report. Now, over and above that, you also have the situation where they were hacked during COVID and they were filing for, you know, the, the CERB uh, and, and got that fraudulently. So evidently that wasn't fixed or maybe that hole in the boat was fixed but there's three other holes you know down in uh at the other end of the boat and here's the problem with it systems right so um a lot of people think that you can patch an it system and then everything's good to go well the thing is is if you think about any it system usually it's a piece of software think of it as a house if you lock the front door do you think that's going to keep burglars out of your house if the back door is unlocked and the windows are left open? So there's multiple points of entry, multiple potential weaknesses into a piece of software, not necessarily the most obvious one, which is the front door, which is where many IT guys, they actually you know work to secure. Now, if the government was doing this properly, then they would actually be following a lot of the security protocols that go into designing IT systems. There's also things called penetration tests. What are those? Those are third party, typically third party tests that they actually run against your systems and it tries to hack it or it scans it 
to try and identify which windows are open, which doors are unlocked on your system. Then they give you a report that says, hey, Bob, all of these, uh, all of these doors are unlocked on your software. You better fix that because otherwise you're going to be re remaining vulnerable. And then Bob goes away, fixes that, patches the software, closes all the windows, locks all the doors, and then they scan it again. And then hopefully it comes back as green. It couldn't actually penetrate the system. That's how you have at least some confidence that your system is going to withstand the internet. So it sounds like this isn't done on a regular basis. Um, like, I, 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 I don't know what to say. I really don't. You would think, you would think that the CRA should have some of the most secure systems in the government because they deal with, oh, I don't know, money? Our money? Right, taxpayer money. So, you know, this is the frustrating part. Um, so you may be wondering, how did they get in? How did this even happen in the first place? Well, let's take a look. So they actually navigated this in five different steps. So step one, they obtained the e-file credentials to file a return on behalf of a taxpayer. So you know your login to the CRA, username, password, and uh, that's, that's how they essentially hacked into the system as these taxpayers. So they obtained that information somehow, could be just from a weak data point within the CRA security system, and they were able to actually log in as a, a actual taxpayer. Then step two, after they're into that account, they changed the direct deposit information. So any potential refund that may be going to John Q taxpayer is now going to John Q hacker. Step three, they then file a false tax return. What would be in that tax return? Well, enough information that would provide probably a substantial refund to the actual taxpayer if that was actually filed. But all the information in there would be completely bogus. Step four, the CRA fails to detect the fraud and just processes the return. And step five, the CRA says, okay, here's your refund, transfers the money to the now changed direct deposit account, goes into the hacker's account, and the hacker goes on their merry way. So that's how they did it. And they've, do they've done this with thousands, thousands of accounts. Totaling $6 million. I know like, for the for the scandals we've been covering lately, six million dollars is a drop in the bucket, but it's still six million dollars of taxpayer money that's going to hackers who obtained this money fraudulently by filing false tax returns. Well, and potentially these Canadians are only gonna find out that this actually happened when they go to file their tax return, the CRA says, Oh, you've already filed your tax return. And they're gonna say, What? I have not filed my tax return. And you think of these Canadians, many of these people may be relying on their actual refund that they're hoping to get from the CRA to survive. So well, this... And you also have to worry about the criminal implications, not for the hacker. We know what the hacker has done is illegal, but could the person filing the tax return get into any trouble? We don't know. All right, to break down how this affects public trust in the CRA and the government, I'm joined by Anne Kavuki, and she's the former three-term Ontario Privacy Commissioner and the Executive Director of the Global Privacy and Security by Design Centre. Joining us from Toronto, Anne, it's great to see you. Thank you so much for this. My pleasure, Angie. What is going through your mind when you hear millions of dollars in bogus payments? I mean, in the end, of course, you say, where's the accountability? Who's responsible? It, it's almost beyond belief, because not only is this uh, an enormous privacy infraction, I mean, but people gaining access, hackers gaining access to all of your tax, tax information, uh, filing false returns, changing your direct deposit information, making up new home addresses. I mean, this is appalling. So not only is your personal information completely violated, but this is your tax information. Uh, where perhaps you might get a tax refund or whatever, extremely personal. And all of this has just been going out the door. 
this is just appalling. When we come, and we've had a lot of conversations in terms of privacy, security, and, and this is not the first time, of course, when we look at uh, you know, other situations of hacking um, you know, occurring. How does something like this happen, though? You would think with it being a government agency, there would be the utmost checks and balances, the utmost level of security. And that's exactly the point. The security was obviously totally lacking. These hackers, and hackers are brilliant, and uh, let me be clear, but that's why you need very strong guardrails to prevent them being able to hack into the most personal information, mm -hmm. such as your tax information, which has not only your personal identifiers linked to it, your name, address, your social insurance number, but your financial data. This is extremely sensitive data. And how they could just per per penetrate within the CRA, obtain this information, millions of records, and the CRA, I mean, it's not, it doesn't seem like it's a big deal to them. I mean, this has been kept quiet for a very long time. Well, I wanted to ask you about that, the fact that they did not report the breach to the public themselves, with this, of course, coming out of an investigation here, of course, with the, you know, here at CBC. So um, what about that level of accountability then? Why not let people know that this has happened to them? Absolutely. It compounds the concern dramatically because not only did all this outrageous activity take place, not only in terms of privacy invasiveness, but fraudulently gaining access to your tax records um, and changing the home address in order to claim bogus refunds. Mm -hmm. Not only did all of that take place, but the CRA should have been investigating this at the minute they found out about it, there should be some parliamentary committee that oversees the investigation and reports to the public how dramatically their not only their privacy, but their financial records have been impacted. None of that took place. And this is what should have happened. And she's exactly right. So for those that may not understand, a privacy commissioner is, you know, really one of the watchdogs of privacy within specific jurisdictions. So she, she was the privacy commissioner for Ontario. So um, any problematic issue that may arise, including data, breeze, data breaches, that's where the privacy commissioner you know, steps in and says, what the heck is going on here? You know, just a quick antidote. I remember um, I used to work at a laboratory and I was in the customer service department where we were mainly responsible for faxing patients um, lab results to, uh, to their doctor's offices. And if for some reason we faxed it to the wrong doctor's office, we had to fill out a form that then I believe they collected and sent off to the privacy commissioner because these are very serious breaches when somebody who's not supposed to get your personal information information ends up with your personal information right so um there's uh there's all kinds of legislation around this and for the cra to basically just thumb their nose at it and my guess is is they were they they took the stance of well you know there's already enough scandals around us we don't need any more bad news so we'll just keep this one to ourselves um it's actually disgraceful and the president of the CRA should be fired, the executive team should be fired, and the IT guys should be fired. And there may be some IT people in other areas of the, of, of the government that may have uh, played a part in this, or I, I don't know. It's it, That's the problem. We don't know. Yeah, we don't really know the depth of this, do we? Right. And this this wasn't disclosed by the CRA, you know, finally, to, to actually inform people. No, the Fifth Estate found it. Right. So they th this means they had no intention of notifying all of these people that their accounts were hacked. Well, no, because it's past that two-year window. I mean, if it started in 2020, this should have been divulged by now. Right. So, but you know what? This just reflects what is going on with this government. There's no accountability from, from anybody. Nobody seems to get fired for anything. And, you know, you've had now two ministers of national revenue overseeing the CRA. Nothing's happened. So, um, yeah, the, the job of Pierre and the conservatives in terms of fixing this government just got a whole lot bigger because now they have to look at the CRA basically tear it down to the studs because of all of the corruption that's gone on down there and now the the public servant leadership team there 
is, is now culpable in in this breach there's no way they did not know so it's just outrageous how that agency continues to operate and again we're the ones that are supposed to be accountable to them to pay our taxes like it's outrageous so um this is just one more black mark on this government and it's one more reason why we need an election as soon as humanly possible <laughs>